Hello everyone and welcome to this introductory lecture to um, uh, multivariable calculus. Um, so the main idea that I want to answer, the main question that I want to answer in this lecture is uh, why uh, should we extend calculus to more than one D? This is a very good question to ask. Um, you know, you could make the argument that isn't cal calculus hard enough as it is, uh, why should we extend it to more than one dimension? And um, I guess um, uh, a very straightforward and direct answer to that question is, um, well, for one, we live in four-dimensional space-time. Specifically, we call it uh, space-time, where you have uh, three dimensions of space, Cartesian coordinates, this is x, y, and z, typically, in one dimension of time. Um, so any physical function that uh, we want to model uh, using um, calculus is going to realistically depend on four things. Um, so what we're going to go through and do in this lecture is I'll just kind of list out a number of different examples and kind of uh, explain their relevance to various majors and uh, why it's actually very important for you to consider uh, multi multivariable functions. The first example and the first couple examples will all be from various areas of engineering and physics. Um, but if you wanted to describe, say, the temperature, at any point in a room, this is some function of position and time, or uh, in Cartesian coordinates, a function of x, y, z, and t. Uh, it's actually a very special type of multivariable function called a scalar field. At every single point in space and in time, uh, we have one uh, specific value defined. That value is the temperature at that point in space and in time. Um, so for instance, uh, kind of draw a picture here to see what we mean. Could have maybe a uniform temperature where at every single point the temperature is constant, which I'll just denote by this these gray dots here for every single point in 3D space. But then at some point, if you say turn on uh, a heater at some location and then maybe open up a window at some location, um, you're going to have that, uh, that the heat starts to flow out of the room and heat starts to be generated at the point that, that the heater is at. Um, let's say the heater is right here, the heat source, and maybe you open up a window right here, and gradually the temperature is going to flow uh, uh, until it reaches some sort of equilibrium. Um, but the idea here is that uh, all of the points temperatures are going to gradually change from hot the cold and this change can actually be modeled with uh, a mathematical equation known as the, the heat equation. Super super important uh, in say any heat transfer problem that you're trying to solve. 
This is an example of a multivariable function of three position coordinates and a time coordinate. So this is a great uh, first example of a multivariable function. Applications of this abound, um, but probably most going to be most useful uh, in the realm of mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, civil engineering, you know, in various uh, physical problems you might study as well, so in physics. So this is an example of what's called a scalar field. Another extremely, extremely, extremely important example is that of uh, an electromagnetic field. And uh, an electromagnetic field is actually not a scalar field. It's what's known as a vector field um, at any point in space uh, and time. We typically denote the electric field as, or the electric field vector as a vector that depends on position and on time. And if we uh, use uh, what are called the Cartesian coordinates, which is one of the main coordinate systems we'll be using in the course. This can be described as uh, the x component of the electromagnetic field at the point x, y, z, and t, the y component of the electromagnetic field at this point, and the z component of the electric field at this point in time. We also have uh, corresponding what's called the magnetic field. Same exact idea, but it's a, actually a different field, and it's related to the electric field through um, uh, what are called partial differential equations that govern um, these two fields. Specifically, these are called uh, Maxwell's equations. Again, a little bit later on in the course, we might describe some of these partial differential equations, but the idea here is just to kind of get an idea of uh, how multivariable functions uh, appear in various areas of engineering, uh, physics, and even uh, other areas of uh, you know, many, many, many other areas of um, uh, modern applied mathematics. This is most useful for electrical engineers, for physicists, and uh, you know, really any any time uh, that you're considering uh, and you need to consider the electromagnetic field. But the main point here is that uh, you know, the electric electric field, the magnetic field, uh, are both examples of multivariable functions. For another example, we consider the, uh, it's called the fluid velocity field. If you have a, a, a flowing uh, fluid, maybe say uh, air going over an airfoil um, or um, you know, it, really any number of other uh, you know, applied things that you might want to study involving fluid flow, uh, the fluid velocity field is an essential tool in uh, what's called fluid mechanics. And this is typically denoted uh, as U of RT stands for the velocity vector at point R 
the time t. This is a vector field with in Cartesian coordinates. Gives you the x velocity of a parcel of fluid, the y velocity of a parcel of fluid, and the z velocity of a parcel of fluid at any given point in space and in time. This is super useful for aerospace engineers, uh, for mechanical engineers, for physics physicists and physics majors. Um, but the idea here is that uh, both of these examples, the electromagnetic field and the fluid velocity field, uh, are examples of vector fields, not of uh, scalar fields. Now, uh, it should be clear though that even though these are vector fields or uh, vector uh, valued functions of uh, position argument, um, these vector valued functions are still composed of um, normal scalar functions. We just have multiple scalar functions for each one of these vector fields that um, we're considering. And so what I want to do now is uh, show a little bit of a demonstration. This is a, uh, an animation of uh, the exact solution to what's called the two-dimensional wave equation. Um, uh, you get the two-dimensional wave equation in a, a variety of different modeling contexts, but this 2D wave equation uh, essentially governs the, you can think of it as governing the uh, displacement of, say, a two-dimensional elastic membrane. Um, this is what's called the, the linear wave equation, but you can exactly solve this, and this is an animation that I made uh, in my uh, graduate engineering mathematics class. Um, using Python. Um, so this is uh, just kind of a visualization program to show uh, a, a time-dependent plot of the solution to this wave equation. So imagine that you um, pluck uh, a string here, or not a string, but a, a membrane in the middle of the membrane, and you want to uh, kind of watch uh, how the, the membrane is going to uh, be disturbed over a, a certain length of time. So I'll hit play here, and we'll take a, a look at this. This is for uh, what are called two fixed boundaries and one uh, variable boundary. So one of the boundaries, the, the rightmost in this picture, is uh, free to uh, move up and down, but the, the other boundaries are fixed. And here you can, you can see the resulting wave propagation and uh, also the correct boundary movement of this, this membrane. You can think of this almost like a drum head. On the left is what's called a, uh, a plot of the graph of the displacement function u. On the right is uh, just a visualization using what's called a density plot, uh, which we'll uh, define more in uh, the next few, few lectures as we kind of get into this. This is very neat. This is the exact solution to the wave equation. This uh, linear wave equation appears uh, in both uh, electromagnetic field uh, research and in fluid, fluid research as well uh, in various contexts. I also want to point out that uh, you can do similar type things for uh, the heat equation and for uh, heat flow problems as well, uh, with regards to temperature. And uh, the next uh, example that we'll, uh, we'll look at is what are called stress strain relations. Uh, the stress strain relationship. for general elastic bodies.
you can think of an elastic body as like a, a three-dimensional beam, say, uh, that you're using in constructing a bridge or constructing a building. Let's just kind of draw a diagram here of this in 3D. Let's say you apply some sort of force on uh, this beam at various points. Could be the weight of the building. It could be structural st structural forces uh, due to, say, an earthquake or other uh, you know, wind blowing on the building. But uh, the idea is that uh, we uh, describe uh, these relationships using what's known as uh, it's a tensor or um, in slightly less complicated terminology, uh, a very special matrix function of uh, position in time. So we use typically epsilon as the, the strain function. At some point r in time t, where each one of these uh, represents the uh, the stretching of the elastic body uh, at a given point. And uh, likewise, we have another uh, matrix function, sigma, the function of position in time which is the stress of uh, on the body um, at a point R and at a point T. And this is, again, going to be sigma 1, 1, sigma 1, 2, sigma 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, This is called the strain at point R time T. And uh, the idea is that uh, if this is a scalar field, the temperature is an example of a scalar field, uh, electromagnetic field and fluid velocity field is an example of a vector field, this is an example of a tensor field, it's called. And I will not be getting into defining what a uh, tensor is uh, in this class, but um, if you're interested, uh, I recommend after this class taking the course Vector Tensor Calculus, which is almost a direct dis extension of a lot of the things we'll be talking about in this class. But um, even though these sound like they may not be, uh, you know, there might be these esoteric objects, they're actually extremely practical and extremely important because the strain uh, tensor at a given point gives you the amount of stretching this elastic body is doing and the stress tensor at a given point um, gives you the amount of forces r relative to each uh, axis that you're dealing with. Uh, so uh, both linear forces and rotational forces. And uh, what's actually interesting is that both of these for a linear elastic material can be combined uh, into what's known as a generalized Hooke's law which uh, kind of generalizes uh, the Hooke's Law in 1D that you hopefully learned about in uh, basic physics, physics class. Um, so this is all I'll, I'll say about uh, this topic, but um, we'll just say here that it's useful for many, many different applications in mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, uh, civil engineering, and of course physics. Um, you say want to study the stresses and strains on an airfoil wing, so the wing of a plane or a jet, uh, due to uh, fluid that's going over the airfoil wing. It's kind of a combination of this idea of right, stress and strain and uh, fluid flow, so fluid mechanics. Um, 
if you're a civil engineer, you want to make sure that your, your buildings and the, the, the materials that you're using in your buildings are designed uh, in such a way that it's not going to fall down <laughs> um, and you know, people don't get hurt. Same thing with, with bridges, for instance. Um, so it's super useful and super important to understand these things in mechanical engineering and in civil engineering as well. Um, another very important thing that we will uh, be going over in this class uh, in detail when we get to uh, double and triple integration. So the definite integral is the idea of center of mass. It's also uh, an important concept in electrical engineering as well because we can also define what's called the center of charge of a body. Um, we can actually do the center of any density function that we want. Um, we can compute the geometric center, uh, which is called the centroid of an object. Um, and then uh, these ideas also lead to uh, what are called moments, specifically uh, in uh, civil engineering and mechanical engineering, uh, the moment of inertia is super important. And in electrical engineering, the, what's called the moment of charge is very important. And this is uh, related to this idea of um, if you take, say, this generic uh, structure, maybe some generic beam, in general, the masses in the beam, if uh, we're uh, considering a mass distribution, um, in general, for uh, real materials, the masses are not distributed evenly throughout the material. The, the density, the mass density is going to be different. It's a different multivariable function at different points. So say you have a very big conglomeration of mass here, very big conglomeration of mass here, and a very big conglomeration of mass here. And then throughout the rest of the material, it's slightly less so. And there are certain regions where there's really very little mass density. problem of determining the center of mass of this three-dimensional object uh, uh, can be solved using uh, the triple integral and uh, the ideas that we'll develop in this course. So we'll actually go through these examples uh, near the end of this course. So this is a super useful idea for uh, any mechanical engineering majors, aerospace engineering majors, civil engineering majors, uh, and I'm going to attack on physics here as well because uh, really all of these are examples from uh, mathematical physics, which is my field uh, of uh, expertise. And this is probably why I like to start off by going over all of these uh, physics examples or physics-based examples. But uh, I don't want to leave any major, any, any, any uh, you know, area of application out here. Um, the next example that I'm going to talk about is uh, from uh, financial mathematics. So uh, let's say, for example, you have a stock portfolio with N stocks, and so you invest in N companies. or stonks. As uh, some people like to say, um, let's say we invest in N companies, S1, S2, Sn, and um, specifically that uh, with each one of these companies we're invested uh, at a different percentage. So maybe um, we're suppose we're invested in stock I at uh, some percentage CI, where CI 
is a number between 0 and 1. And uh, the sum of all the C values, or all the percentages, has to add up to 1. Because uh, each one of these CIs is a number between 0 and 1, representing the percentage of investment in each individual stock. And then the total returns in a given quarter, say, we call this R, is going to be the sum of C1 times the return uh, in stock 1 plus C2 times the return in stock 2 all the way up to CN times the return in stock N um, where uh, R1 through Rn right, is the return uh, on each one of these individual stocks for a given quarter. Um, this uh, is a multivariable function of R1 through Rn where the, the weights, they're called coefficient CI, are uh, the amount of investment uh, so in general, what you want to do uh, to maximize your portfolio or the, uh, maximize the number of returns, uh, amount of returns that you're getting, is to choose C1 through CN uh, correctly um, so that um, uh, you're uh, getting the largest return uh, every, every quarter. But the main example here is that this is a multivariable function. Um, and one of uh, the many, many, many real-world examples that we have of multivariable functions. So the uh, areas of interest here um, would be, uh, say, general applied mathematics, um, specific financial mathematics, um, and um, you know, other areas that are kind of similar to financial mathematics but really anyone with a stock portfolio is trying to maximize their returns. So this is a very good example. And the, the last example that I'm going to touch on is called, uh, is it from um, uh, you know, it's an example in computer science, um, and it's a relatively modern example, only the past maybe uh, 20 years or so has it gotten really big, but this is a uh, big data analysis. Specifically, uh, what's called machine learning. And specific algorithm of what are called neural networks. And I'll post a, a, a video uh, explaining these. Might be a little bit advanced for us now, but uh, kind of explaining these on the Canvas site for the course. Um, the the idea is that uh, specifically, you know, machine learning and neural networks are essentially uh, using multivariable calculus um, to um, write uh, an algorithm that uh, learns and uh, gets better at doing whatever you want the algorithm to do. Um, and the applications of this are numerous, right? But the idea here is that uh, you know, one of the big applications uh, that you can do is, uh, say, uh, facial recognition software, um, uh, the, the, the software that Apple or Samsung use uh, to identify you, or right, if you use the, the face scans, um, and there are many, many, many other almost uncountable examples. Uh, but the idea here is that right, this is applied mainly in the big topic in CS, uh, but also in uh, um, data science in general, and uh, even as far as in IMGD. All right interactive media and game development because if you want to develop a game that uh, is uh, smart and learns um, uh, for you know any say task that you're trying to do in the game uh, this is a very important thing to consider and to use so uh, this is gonna conclude uh, the, the, the lecture today I just wanted to kind of give uh, a number of different 
uh, good uh, examples of where we can find multivariable calculus in the real world um, uh, that we don't even really have to look that hard for. Um, so this is going to give us some you know, motivation for learning the mathematical theory uh, that we're uh, about to uh, you know, embark on discovering over this course. Um, and I, I hope that I've convinced you right, that uh, anyone who says that this stuff doesn't apply in the real world uh, doesn't really know what they're talking about because there is uh, an almost uncountable number of real world applications of uh, the concepts that we're going to be talking about um, lying around every corner imaginable. Um, so thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you learned something and that you had a great day.